Hey everybody, Rob or Gail, your favorite Psyolter nut job. In today's video, I wanted to do a dive into suppressor back pressure mitigation. As we know, back pressure is a very bad thing for our weapon system and for our anatomy. Be through our nose, eyes, lungs, all of those things is bad news. So how do we mitigate that so that our life can stay on course for its longevity, we can enjoy shooting without tearing up, and our rifle's life can stay on course, not just for today's range, but also in its longevity to reduce that back pressure. So the first thing we're going to look at is charging handles. Now, if you wanna see a full video of head-to-head -head comparison of all the different charging handles I can get my hands on, I will absolutely do that. Drop in the comments section the charging handle video or just put ch video and i'll know what you mean and i will look into making a full breakdown of all the different charging handles you could possibly put into your rifle to reduce those gases so that we can see if it makes a difference i'm not totally sure if it is i'd love to hear your thoughts let's move on to the next one this is a rifle speed adjustable gas block. Now this has a knob on the end that allows us to tighten it and loosen it. As we tighten it, there's a plunger that chokes off gases. Now we know the AR-15 has a bullet that passes through the chamber barrel and then it hits the gas port right here. The gas comes up to the gas tube and pushes the gas back into the operating system. By choking this down, it gives us positions one through 12 in order to choke down how much gas we add rearward. Now the benefit of this is it allows you to turn the gas gases back up when your suppressor is off. I know there's a lot of guys that will say, I prefer to do the buffer buffer spring technique. And that is an option. Just keep in mind that when you put on your suppressor and your buffer buffer spring, and then you test it, get it all set up, you will have to keep that suppressor on your gun in order for it to cycle. Otherwise you might start getting malfunctions. So you either tune the gun to no suppressor and get last round hold up in normal cycle operations, or you tune it to the suppressor. But if anything happens, like you forget to attach your suppressor or something catastrophic happens, your silencer goes down range, on any training day, you can stop what you're doing, take a timeout and go pick up your silencer, dust it off, play with your gas settings, and then get your gun back up. But in a real world engagement, Guys like me train for these type things with my background in the military, private military, and instruction, across, and instruction across both of those platforms. It's very important that you don't have a critical fail point within your weapon and that you're not adding critical fail points. In other words, if there's a radio operator, there's a guy who's cross-trained in that radio. So in case he gets hurt and can't hop on comms, someone else can. Your rifle should be the same concept, that your weapon should work with and without your suppressor in case you don't have it on for some reason or it takes a baffle strike and goes down range. Any number of things can happen. So I like the idea of this gas system that allows you to turn it up, turn it down, and then I even circle the different suppressants. And I'll put a U for unsuppressed and an S on top of the number for suppressed. And this way I know which settings it needs given the correct suppressor. Also, if you've seen in previous videos, I use this for testing different settings for different suppressors so that I can measure how much back pressure each suppressor has. So this is the rifle speed adjustable gas block. Now here's a big disclaimer I want to say here. If you go onto Rifle Speed's website, you'll find me discussing how to set them up, how to tear them down, how to rebuild them. Some time ago, I was paid to create content for that, that um, manufacturer. And in that process, I got to learn a lot and really use it in a lot of other ways that were very beneficial to me. So it allowed me a lot of extra testing time. But I'll also make a good mention that if you have access to the range and you're good tinkering on a gun, that is a great solution to you. But if you only get to go to the range once a year, a couple times a month, or however often, you might not want that because it takes some tinker time. The first time you go to the range, it might not work the way you want. You might have to add this guy and play with your buffers to get it tuned just right without a suppressor. And then find the correct setting for with a suppressor. And then you can always add one or two if it starts getting dirty throughout the day. But I've also found in some cases, once it's set up and it's just perfect, a thousand rounds later, you might need to tune it a second time. So as long as you're willing to tinker, this is a great option. Okay, the next option, you'll see in front here, I've got an LMT. Now this is their Spec War piston model. And you'll see on the front here, there is an adjustable piston setting. So you can leave it from suppressed and then rotate it like 15 degrees into the unsuppressed setting. Now the pro and con of this is typically you'll find this on piston guns. It's not very commonly available on gas guns because often those will clog up. So you'll find more frequently the rifle speed system or a switch block on the gas system up front on a piston system. So with the piston system, the newer BNT guns will give you three settings, which I love. The LMT only gives you one setting. 
and all the testing I've done so far, it shows me that in the unsuppressed setting, I can run all of my suppressors that have a, let's call it a delta, meaning zero is unsuppressed, no, no effects of a suppressor, obviously, and then 10 is like, you've got the highest back pressure suppressor you can own. If you're in this area, then you use it in the unsuppressed setting. So it increases the gas back pressure just a hair. Some would argue it's not noticeable, but you can't choke that off because when you choke it off, the weapon won't operate correctly because it's choking it off so much, it's wanting to handle these type of suppressors, which are on the more full back pressure, 80% back pressure type suppressors. So with the two setting systems, you have to find what suppressors do and do not work. And I also look forward to being a mentor and guide in this topic as I will be doing a deep dive into each one of my weapons and their suppressor settings and what suppressors work on those different settings. So if you want to hear more about that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe so you don't miss any of our content as we got dive deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of the fun world of suppressors. Next, this is a bolt carrier group. And in this bolt carrier group, it's a bootleg. Now, originally Gemtech had a suppressed, unsuppressed bolt carrier group. And it is my understanding that they've discontinued that bolt carrier group. If you can find them, hey, let me know where you find them because they were a great solution. But again, to position, fully suppressed, fully unsuppressed, which means all the low back pressure stuff, it really doesn't do much for it. The, the bootleg, however, has four positions. Now, what I found in the bootleg bull carrier group is unsuppressed setting bleeds off some gas. So in some cases, you might have to play with your buffer buffer weight, even though you've got it in the full open setting, it is still choking off some of that gas. What I have found is in many guns with a muzzle device and that first setting, it makes for a very soft shooting unsuppressed rifle, as long as it operates regularly. Now, the three settings for suppressors those are big leaps. So that first setting is like 50% standard back pressure. So if you've got a low back pressure suppressor, you might find that that bolt carrier group does not work for you in its suppressed settings. It actually needs to stay in the unsuppressed setting. And as it's bled off a little bit, you'll find it balances out very well with some of the low back pressure suppressors. So that gives us charging handles, that gives us adjustable gas blocks, one of many types I displayed. Then we have piston systems and their adjustable settings, and then we have bolt carrier groups and their adjustable settings. Finally, I've got my favorite answer, and people are going to say, Rob, it's not fair that you said that, but I'm going to say it anyways low back pressure suppressors. If you have a low back pressure suppressor, you're going to cut down on back pressure. You're going to push those gases forward and it's not going to choke up that system and therefore not require mitigation. Now there are many low back pressure suppressors today that aren't really low back pressure. They're just sort of low back pressure and any of these other systems will accompany them well to help reduce the gas to the face and all the other effects. However, the truly low back pressure suppressors really need no mitigation on the Weapon at all. Now I'm holding up the Huxworks as an example. Some would say, well, the Huxworks isn't very quiet. And you're right, the Flow 556K is not a quiet suppressor. In fact, it is the flashbang. If everybody's got suppressors in the class, then being next to the one unsuppressed guy is no fun. If everyone has suppressors and being next to the one guy with the 556 Flow K, you don't want to be next to that guy. He will have the loudest gun in the class and it will be obnoxious. That's just the, the goal they were searching for when they made that suppressor. They were trying to keep the back pressure as low as possible and sound was a low priority for that program. Now on their full size Flow 556 and 308, they sound really very good. I would say in the past, I, I didn't care for Huxworks. I've had conversations with them where I said, look, I don't think you guys make good products. I think it's low back pressure, but no silencer has low back pressure too. So I don't see the need to put a flash can into my gun just to say that it's low back pressure. Well, the Flow 556K, you'll see there's one behind me, and it is good for certain purposes, but generally speaking, it's not the one I recommend unless it's a duty weapon for high use and heavy abuse, and then in that case, sure, but it just doesn't sound quiet, and the commercial market really wants their suppressor to be quiet. So you would say, well, you can't have low back pressure and quiet, and that used to be true. That's not true anymore. Now, some of my quietest suppressors are in fact 3D printed and low back pressure. So the best option I would suggest to anyone who asks me is unless you're dedicated on a bolt action rifle, it's a good idea to have a low back pressure suppressor so that you don't have to change out each system, change out your bolt carriers, change out your gas systems just to put your suppressor on it. Because once you go suppressed, you're gonna want your suppressor and your suppressors on all of your firearms that you take to the range. Guys, if you like this content, make sure you do me a huge favor. YouTube doesn't like me talking about this. Put a like, comment, subscribe, do all those good things. Hit the hype button, it's a new feature they've got. It really does go a long way for the channel. I appreciate you. I look forward to reading your comments. As always, stay safe.